building cities through the ages. Hello, my name is GamerZack, and I've been making these kind of list videos for a decade now, and welcome to my 30 upcoming PC city building games in 2023 and 2024 list that I make just for you. Every year we get an endless wave of new games. Many fail to hold everything together, but the more extensive the infrastructure, the more construction projects will succeed. So these days we undoubtedly get a few gems every year. Which of these 30 games will turn out good? No one ever guesses right. Statistically, one to three games will succeed. So if you fancy yourself a magnificent mayor, write down your prediction in a comment and come back in the future to see if you got it right. Don't forget the 20 bonus games at the end as well. Now let's get started. Laying the foundation, it's colonized by Rembrosoft. Looking like a banished inspired survival city builder, which there are a lot of out there. I promise there's quite a lot of variety in this list. This one takes place during the colonization period in the 17th century, where you'll be settling the new world and facing the challenges the settlers faced. Manage your citizens and resources across six different cities you have to establish while surviving against hunger, the weather, and outside threats. A free prologue demo was made available in 2022, which they used to get feedback about the game and plan how to finalize the full release. So generally the prologue demo isn't being updated and is considered an early look and of course has performance issues, bugs, and so on. Things have definitely been delayed, as the full game's Steam page says they wanted to leave early access by early 2022, while towards the end of 2022, early access hasn't even begun. So it's impossible to know when this will get a proper release. Hopefully, development gets back on track, and Colonize turns out to be something interesting. And then for a game where you must choose a side, Thrive Heavy Lies the Crown by Zugalu Entertainment. The fate of the kingdom weighs heavily on your shoulders, and the choices you will make descend into benevolence or tyranny as you explore the world, expand your cities, and influence the land. Harvest resources and allow your people to survive and progress through the tech tree. There is also real-time combat where most things are simulated. Soldier deaths affect morale, ammunition needs resupply, equipment needs repairs, and troops experience fatigue. I'm a big fan of the ability to go between good and evil, and having it affect things visually and in terms of gameplay. It feels like a throwback to games like Black and White, and it's kind of a reward having your creations reflect your personality. Though having said that, the aesthetic of the game does look a bit dated. Not the worst, but you can see a lot of nice looking games in this list, if not super stylistic games. But if gameplay is solid, it won't be an issue. Going into early access in March 2023, the estimation is one year to release, meaning 2024 at earliest for a finished version of Thrive Heavy Lies the Crown. And now for some blocky building, we have Spirit and Stone by Garden Gate Interactive. From village to castle, build your kingdom block by block. Explore the world, befriend neighbors and spirits, Grow your industries and watch your citizens thrive in your creation. Well, if you do a good job anyway. <laughs> so obviously Minecraft popularized the blocky building and is often used to build cities itself. But an actual city building game has some other prerequisites. And here it really looks like they're trying to make a blocky city builder that's actually a city builder. Since it's blocks, you can build like Legos, and most notably, you can build up. With a little bit of suspension of realistic physics, creatively vertical constructions allow you to build unique villages and expansive fortresses. So this isn't a typical city builder as you can see, 
but I do know many would enjoy something like this, and variety is always good. If you're interested, go have a closer inspection of Spirit and Stone to see where it's going from here. For a pretty artistic take, we've got Synergy by Laker Studios. The moment you set your eyes on this, it immediately looks different from anything else on this list, but a unique art style alone isn't enough. A survival city building game where you face natural disasters, make important choices, research technologies and explore an ever-changing environment while managing your people's physical and mental needs in extreme weather conditions. The animated cinematics are very impressive, and the whole game has this comic book-esque feel, which is important as it communicates the developer's sense of taste and style that possibly could translate into the rest of the game. Though it looks amazing, actual gameplay is a bit scarce at the moment, so I'll definitely be keeping Synergy in sight through its development, as no release window has been mentioned so far. Okay, now we're a bit into the video. I'm sure you're enjoying it and I've spent a lot of time on this. So if you do appreciate what you see here, please do press the like button. It's free and it helps a lot. I'd also love to know which game on the list is your favorite. So comment down below. It actually does help me look for more games that you will want to see. Alright, next game. Going down into the darker depths, it's Abyssals by Overpowered Team. No more building in the sun here. This is a survival city builder set in the dark depths of an inhospitable planet. Build your underwater colony, explore where light can't reach, and hunt for rare resources down in a world which is hostile in every way. Setting up infrastructure to power lamps is crucial because who knows what lays in wait in the darkness. Taking survival city building a step further with needs, you'll need to obtain oxygen just so your people can stay alive long enough to accomplish their tasks. It's an interesting twist on survival city building and a fresh setting for it. So Abyssals does seem to have the promise of doing something new in the genre, but at the moment, not too much has been seen. Creeping towards a 2023 release window, Abyssals itself is lying in wait, and we'll have to wait and see whether it can keep the lights on among all this competition. For one more underwater one, it's Aquatico by Digital Reef Games. These underwater city builds are like kind of building Rapture from Bioshock. But hey, maybe have it actually working kind of properly? Anyway, Aquatico is a survival city builder set deep beneath the waves where you build your futuristic city with vertical layered construction, set up underwater infrastructure, and set off on expeditions to uncover secrets. There's also a myriad of technologies to unlock on the tech tree. Okay, okay, I know this is currently slated for a quarter 3 2022 release, but it was announced during 2022, and in June, it was still being labeled Alpha, so either it releases by the end of 2022, and I'd never get a chance to properly include it in one of my lists since I only do them once a year, or what I'm kind of betting on is that it's either going to be an early access release or it gets delayed, I might be wrong on this though, and it ends up being a full 2022 release. But a city builder like this should get a mention here, and if anything, it'll release later on into the year, and you'll be able to play Aquatico through 2023. A bit of an exception because of timing and short notice, and it's an interesting game. Coming out of the water, but into space, we've got Alien Horizon by Purple Nebula. Sci-fi city building from an indie developer set on an inhospitable planet. Facing Earth's imminent destruction, humanity pooled their resources to begin colonizing other habitable planets, but the one you've landed on turned out to be much less habitable than expected. Featuring complex resource management, exploration of random maps, researching technologies, 
setting up public transport and a system of laws, it seems to be building towards a fully-fledged city-building game. Now, this is a smaller development, and visually it's a little basic, but still aesthetically cohesive. But it could help fill the space in the more realistically themed sci-fi city-building subgenre, as over the years that has been a more rare take on city-building. And it's nice to actually see more sci-fi city-builders come through this year as usually city builders go into the realm of historical or fantasy. Now you can try the current build of this for free on Itch.io, so although it might still be a long ways off from being completed, Alien Horizon is keeping at it and you can check it out. And then we have Infraspace by Dionic Software. Sci-fi city building with a focus on the flow of resources and transport infrastructure. Starting from nothing, you build an extrasolar efficiency utopia by mining, planning production lines, and managing transport routes. Initial colonists would be astronauts who can put up with anything. But once you need more, you'll have to start providing creature comforts to keep scientists and engineers happy. Later, things growing into an actual livable city. This does look like it can get very complicated. But difficulty options allow you to go as hard as you like, which is nice. After entering early access towards the end of 2021, this has received fewer but very positive reviews and has received updates including terraforming, mod support, new biomes, piping systems, transportation improvements, and more. Initially having a loose target of six months in early access, it's taking longer for sure. And you can either check out Infraspace now or see how it develops into 2023. Going from planets to something a bit smaller, we have Moons of Arden by Pandora Technology. Rebuild and expand civilization across moons in a real-time simulated planetary system. You follow the Axonauts, survivors of a generational ship that crashed on a lonely moon, losing most of their technology in the crash. The goal of this is to build a wonder, which will allow them to reconnect with their home world. And to do that, you'll have to collect resources, build livable cities, set up production chains, and colonize other celestial bodies in the system. It is a low poly game, which I know some of you like and some of you hate, but I do want to note that the color usage is quite vibrant and fresh, which suits the sci-fi setting, and I think it looks pretty good. This is a smaller development, but does have a free demo, and it's been in early access since late 2021, with the goal of full release by early 2023. So if you feel like it, go ahead and check out Moons of Arden, and see if it's something you fully want to settle into. Going a bit more abstract, it's Complex Sky by Complex Blue Studio. A futuristic city-building game with a unique architecture system, Complex Sky allows you to build up and down in a world devastated by pollution. You have to construct a self-sustaining city in the skies to support human settlers trying to survive. You must also choose a tech corporation to headline your endeavors, each with their own traits, advantages, and drawbacks. Then set up automated supply chains to keep things running. Vertical city building has been an increasing trend, and this game pushes that quite far by just kind of ignoring physics almost entirely, which does allow this to set itself apart. This won't be completing soon, as the plan is to spend two to three years in early access, and as we approach the end of 2022, early access hasn't begun yet. But we have been seeing more actual gameplay developments through the past year, and you can try the current early version of Complex Sky for free on Itch.io. And this eases us into what might be a new trend in city building games, as the next few are chill, relaxing ones. Mossfield Origins by Studio Any Percent. 
a small, cozy city builder where all your buildings are built from the same foundation. Relax, take your time, and build a self-sustaining community for your residents to chill in. This is promising no time pressure or external forces as you upgrade your foundations through a tech tree and redefine and refactor your space. It's kind of interesting to see many city builders are starting to swing in the opposite direction they've been going in since the success of Banished and the popularization of the stressful city builder. Now we're getting a slew of chill, relaxed games in the genre. And I think I've seen a lot of people over the years want a breather from the harsh worlds. This says it will release when the grass turns orange. So I don't know, I guess autumn or a dry summer? Northern or Southern Hemisphere? Uh -oh. Whenever it releases, I think Mossfield Origins looks like it'll find a niche and be relatively successful as long as gameplay doesn't overstep the calm and end up in boring territory. Continuing the chill, it's Terra Nil by Free Lives. I played Terra Nil in its original form, which was fully pixel art, and I loved it. Though since being picked up by Devolver Digital as a publisher, the game has been expanded with an all-new modern aesthetic, new features and mechanics, and just a more extended game in general, which I think many would prefer. Now, whether this counts as a city builder, I'd love to hear what you think. You're not really building houses and you dismantle all your construction at the end. But just because the construction is temporary, does that mean it doesn't count? It's a tricky definition, but either way, Terra Nil has a lot of unique things going for it, and I think fans of city building games would find something to enjoy in it. Work on the game has been showing off new regions like Tropical and Polar, and there's a free demo available as well. So if you're curious about Terra Nil, you can check it out personally and see if you consider it a city builder or not, and whether you like it or not. Coming in like a gentle breeze, it's Homewind by Adi Javo. This one is a minimalist, relaxing, cozy city builder about creating large settlements based on proximity tactics. It's a gridless, procedurally generated world, and there are over a hundred levels for you to build on. Visually, it's pleasant, and there are some nice building mechanics, but the game makes itself pretty clear. There aren't any deep or complex systems that you might expect from a more fully-fledged city building or strategy game. As you can see though, there's starting to be quite a bit of demand for games like this. The audio and music also sounds like it's been composed to enhance your relaxation, which I think is important for a game like this. What's more, Homewind is in early access now and it's completely free, so you really can't complain. Loosely planning to be in early access for six months to a year, but probably longer, I would expect Homewind to be considered finished sometime in 2023. And then we get to lay back by a waterfront in Lakeside by Massive Galaxy Studios. Build and manage a peaceful waterside town or expand it into a monumental, picturesque city in this side-scrolling city builder. It's a little bit of a survival game where you need to harvest resources, generate food and keep your population alive, but nothing too stressful. Pixel art is of course a favorite of mine, and this game looks beautiful for the style. It's a super chill game, and it does continue to follow this trend of chill city builders which are trying to carve their way through all the stressful survival ones. Side-scrolling for a city builder is also more of a novelty in the genre, so if you're looking for something unique yet easygoing, then this may be for you. I played some of the demo before, and it was pretty bare bones at the time, but was a fun couple hours. So if it just keeps expanding what's already there, then this would be a nice fun time. Planning to go into early access by the end of 2022, 
It's a one-year estimation until full release, so we're building towards a 2023 full release for Lakeside. Strolling out of the chill zone, but with something similar. Vertical Kingdom by Farlight Games Industry. Alright, this does look a lot like Lakeside, doesn't it? But it's got its own take on things, so let's inspect. Vertical Kingdom is meant to be a rogue light city builder that uses cards, and the main focus is building up because of the limited space, hence the name. As your cities are located on rocky platforms in deserts, plateaus, or even floating islands. There are also expeditions to obtain resources that will improve your camp for future trips. Once you reach a certain number of citizens, you'll be ready to move on and travel to a new location. So you're not sticking to just one place, and there's a main story to progress through. Besides the campaign, there's also endless and sandbox modes if you want to build without limitations. Generally, it looks pretty good, and watching this compete with Lakeside should make both games better and more unique. Hopefully, anyway. A free demo for Vertical Kingdom is available, but nothing specific for a full release window for now. Going a little bit higher, but still on the ground, we've got Lesara Summit Kingdom by Quite OK Games. Building a city on a mountain as you carefully plan resources and supply chains, moving things up and down to satisfy the needs of your three caste society. Mountain hazards aren't going to just let you do what you want though, as weather can be rough and avalanches are a thing. There's a campaign mode where you conquer various mountains each with their own traits and challenges, some allowing a lot of farming, while others rely on mining. If you manage to build to the top, the final endeavor is to build a summit temple, where the weather is harshest. Also, I think it's important to note that this is a purely economical city builder, so no military is involved in this gameplay. Overall, this looks really interesting, and as you can see, it does also go for that vertical building that's become more popular in recent years. And hopefully, challenges from mountain to mountain are unique and different enough to keep the game fresh. The planned release date is quarter one in 2023, meaning if there aren't any delays, we shouldn't have to wait too long to see what the full version of Leisara Summit Kingdom is like. And now for one that is a very early look, but I do want to draw attention to it. It's Nova Patria by Sower Interactive. One that, at the moment of recording this, seems to be in very early development. Nova Patria is an indie production, and a big note on the footage you're seeing is that a lot of it is temporary art and many intended mechanics not implemented. The setting is an alternate history where the Roman Empire never fell, and instead continued and began settling the new world. I really like that idea. It's basically if ancient Rome progressed into a kind of steampunk world. Mixing real-time resource management and turn-based long-term strategic decisions, you'll be settling new cities like in Sid Meier's colonization and building those cities kind of like an anno. I know this is a long way off and it's basically just a tech demo at this point, but I just found it really interesting and a solid start from a developer that seems passionate about the project. For now, we can keep an eye on Nova Patria to see if it goes anywhere. Staying Roman, but a bit more fantasy. Roman Triumph Survival City Builder by Core Effect Interactive. A strategy city builder where you must build a striving city from the ground up, manage resources and people, and survive against a plethora of threats, including ancient gods, the Hydra, Minotaur, along with barbarian invaders and more. Said to be inspired by banished and kingdom and castles, trading, hunting, and farming are the basis of your city, while also building fortifications and defenses to hold off the threats. Visually, it looks okay, 
if a little rough and unpolished. Also, we haven't been shown much raw gameplay, so I am wary about how this will turn out. It has some interesting ideas, but it's going to boil down to how they're executed, which I'm not 100% convinced just yet. This is aiming at a 2023 to 2024 release, so as we see more over the coming year, we'll keep reassessing Roman Triumph Survival City Builder. For a more Asian-inspired one, we've got Celestial Empire by President Studio. City builders set in Asia have become a popular kind of game to make recently. Immortal Mayor, Ballads of Hongye, and here is Celestial Empire. The Emperor has chosen you as a new provincial governor, and it's now your duty to maintain peace and prosperity in the region. Trade with other landlords and take care of people's needs, satiate the gods, and survive harsh winters and other disasters. This kind of has Anno plus Banished vibes, but as I mentioned, there isn't just a lot of competition for city builders these days, but also Asian-inspired ones. So you gotta do something unique or just be a great execution to survive and I'm not fully convinced Celestial Empire has what it takes yet. This has been going through playtests and demos through 2022, so if things are going according to plan, then a 2023 release seems plausible for Celestial Empire. Though we'll wait and see what's actually delivered. For one that's been making waves, it's Farthest Frontier by Crate Entertainment. From the creators of the very popular action RPG Grim Dawn comes a survival city builder. Harvest raw materials, hunt, fish, farm, produce goods, upgrade buildings, and explore the map in this medieval world. The game can be peaceful to brutal, as you may face disasters and outside threats from disease to fire to invaders and there are even walls to build and soldiers to train. After releasing into early access, this one gave a really good impression. It looks visually amazing, to the point where there were performance issues, and there were some UI oddities and tutorialization problems. But as a survival city builder, there's a lot going for it. Of course, it's Banished inspired, but there's a great crop rotation system and other mechanics really do come together to make it feel more developed and modern, such as the map exploration and the military. After playing it for a few hours, despite the issues, I think I found it to be one of the best upcoming city builders that I've personally tried. Also, I have to note the music is really great. Looking at a four to eight months timeframe in early access, Unless things progress super quick, we're going to get a full version of Father's Frontier pretty soon, early 2023. And then for a set of games that are about moving cities. Beginning with World Turtles by Recog Mission. A Discworld city builder? Well, not quite. This is a wholesome strategy builder where you help Meeps save the life of the world turtle they live on. Construct buildings, harvest resources, manage tasks, research technologies, and work with other Meeps. There might even be other worlds swimming around out there. So a big trend in city builders right now, building off the moving cities trend, is cities built on the backs of living things. We're seeing a few games go in this direction, and I'm kind of into it as it sort of gives the environment you're building in a personality and, well, a face that actually represents nature. So you can't just do whatever you want as your environment is actually alive. Building here is hex-based, sort of settlers-esque, and I know it's not your traditional city builder, but it does look interesting. Whatever you think of it, there's a free demo that anyone can just have a personal look themselves. And World Turtles is swimming towards a late 2022 start of early access, then a year plus to completion. So full release is scheduled for the end of 2023 to early 2024. 
Now, to build on the back of a walking animal, it's The Wandering Village by Strayfawn Studio. Survival city building on the back of a giant creature that slowly moves through the world. Now, for transparency, I haven't really been sponsored by The Wandering Village, but I was paid to do some consultancy work prior to the release of their public demo. As you can see, this one is also building off the trend of not just mobile cities, but also cities built on living animals. But this one has a unique setup where you can either live symbiotically with the creature you build on or act as parasites, taking everything you can up to the edge of the creature's death. As the creature moves, you'll traverse various biomes that will change the weather, temperature, and available resources. So you'll need to keep adapting your playstyle to suit the situations. Oh, and don't forget about the spores that will grow and kill your people and the creature itself. Now, the art style looks pretty unique, and gameplay feels familiar, but with a twist, which is usually the place where a new game wants to be. And if The Wandering Village continues to improve, then this could be a solid game in the near future. Going into early access by the end of 2022, it's a year plus until full release. So 2023 at earliest, but probably 2024 for The Wandering Village. Staying on the move, but not quite as alive, we have Dream Engine's Nomad Cities by Suncrash. Your city flies from location to location in the sci-fi, fantasy, nightmare-infested, post-apocalyptic world. You build an industrious city, kind of mixing city building and factorio with its conveyor belt and production chains. And while landed, you can explore the map with your controllable unit harvest resources, and fight nightmare creatures. Though keep in mind, you can only bring so much with you. So when the monsters attacking you get too overwhelming, you must take off and abandon parts of your city, leaving it behind to be destroyed. Don't forget to manage your fuel and weight as well. I played some of this a while back and it was fun. Since then, there have been some updates adding expeditions, expanding the economy, better controls, modding tools, and more. This has been in early access since 2021, with fewer but mostly positive reviews on Steam. The target is to be in early access for one to two years, and it's been over one. So we're starting to look at a 2023 release if things stay on schedule for Dream Engine's Nomad Cities. Going back to more static constructions, it's Land of the Vikings by Laps Games. Lead your village and expand into a thriving city as you survive the harsh reality of the Vikings. Manage resources, handle raids, and keep your people alive. Those people being fully simulated individuals with over 20 characteristics, ranging from powerfully built warriors to silver-tongued thespians. So things will be better if you're able to select the right people for the right jobs. Weather and disasters will try and put a stop to your plans, but if you trade and raid your way to wealth, then you'll get to hold celebrations and decorate your city. Meanwhile, you progress down the tech tree of life to unlock new buildings, resources, and luxuries. Overall, gameplay is mostly city building, though with some colony management as well. And the main concern is this is just another survival city builder with a Viking skin, but we'll see how it goes. A demo available in 2022 and going into early access by the end of the year, we can see what Land of the Vikings is like and how it'll develop through 2023. The Settlers by Ubisoft Dusseldorf a series that's been decades in the making, and everyone has their favorite Settlers game. Some prefer the old-school style, while others prefer the more modern iterations, but this newest one seems to be straying even further from the original formula. The Settlers has been in development for some years now, and those who have been involved in the testings have not necessarily painted a pretty picture. By the sounds of things, the game is just unlike any previous entry to the series, 
and that it's almost more RTS than town building and resource logistical management, though I think it's still straddling the line between the two. But the straying from the formula, that's probably why the numerous and indefinite delays, because it seems like the game kind of doesn't really know what it wants to be, and it now puts the game in a weird spot because of the delays. The Settler's History Collection released a long time ago now, which would have been a perfect build-up to a new game, but now it's going to be a new game in the middle of nothing in particular, and it might not be like any previous game, so unless it's amazing in its own right, then the newest Settlers might sort of come and go almost unnoticed, because who is this for? Either way, in 2022, they announced another delay, with no specific release window. So the Settlers is still on the way for now, but when it will release and what it'll be is up in the air. People keep asking me about this next one. We have Songs of Six by Gamatron AB. Calling itself a fantasy city builder where you begin as an insignificant colony and build, scheme, and fight your way into becoming a metropolis and empire. This one has the promise of complexity and the butterfly effect, where small imbalances can lead to your city spiraling out of control. There's a living world full of different races, gods, weather, pestilence, and enemies. Resource management to sustain your city, massive tactical battles, along with classes of people such as nobility and slaves. Basically, if you're into Dwarf Fortress or any other game inspired by Dwarf Fortress, Songs of Six has been making a name for itself these past few years and has overwhelmingly positive reviews on Steam. This has been an early access since the end of 2020, so we're going into year 3 now, and 2023 is the approximate release window. What's nice is there is a free demo for it as well, so you can easily try out Songs of Six and see if you want to jump into the full version that shouldn't be too far off. Next up we've got Gord by Covenant Dev. Here's a genre mixing game, calling itself a single player adventure strategy. This is also a survival city builder where you develop structures and walls, eventually building a fortress to fend off enemy tribes, gruesome monsters and mysterious powers lurking in the nearby woods. There are also AI driven quests that you can personally embark on, and you have to manage your populace whose personal stories and well-being impact the fate of the settlement, notably with a sanity and burden system. Special scenarios and procedural map generation should keep things fresh as well. It's all very grim, dark, and pretty cool looking visually and conceptually, and although there is a lot going on with city building only being one part of the game, I think if it's all done correctly, this could be a very captivating game. Having said that, we haven't seen all that much so far, and there's no specific release window announced right now, so we're just gonna have to wait for Gord. Alright, then for one with a bit of a controversy behind it, we have Viking City Builder by Titan Game Z. When this was first revealed, I was skeptical that it was a real game. The title is generic, and the visuals looked too good to be actual gameplay. There's a lot of games out there that are essentially a fancy trailer with no intention to release, or at least they use the fancy trailer to gauge interest and decide whether to actually develop based on that. Over the last year, Development details have been talked about through regular devlogs, and it's said there's an upcoming playtest. Now, that controversy is when what most likely was the pre-rendered trailer was released, it looked a lot like the trailer for Mana Lords. Now, at this point, having a look through the socials and updates for Viking City Builder, it seems that it's actually in development due to the high interest especially since they announced a publisher and company structure shift in June 2022. Will this ever become a real game? 
maybe. But I'm not going to really believe the promise of Viking City Builder until we get at least a demo to play. Speaking of, we've got Mana Lords by Slavic Magic. Now, this is a game that has made a massive splash and has become a sensation in the strategy and city building scenes. Whenever I put it in my strategy list, people ask for it here, and vice versa. So this really straddles a line between genres. It has large-scale sieges and tactical battles while combining it with deep organic and realistic city building with resource management. It visually looks amazing, and both building and military gameplay all seem to be coming together at a level of detail that is rare in gaming. This game is going so all out that it's even mentioned motion capture, photogrammetry, and chaos physics to execute this level of visual detail and simulation. All I have to say is that Mana Lords better be good. Because what's been shown off has hyped a ton of people. And if a game made like this is a success, it's going to send a signal to publishers as well. No release window announced yet. So unfortunately, we all just have to wait for Mana Lords and hope it delivers. For the final main entry, but don't forget there's 20 bonus games after this one. It's Frostpunk 2 by 11-Bit Studios. The sequel to the hit survival city builder that's set in a frozen future where you live around a central heating pillar. In the first game, we struggled to survive, harvesting resources, sending out expeditions on the world map, and making tough decisions. And it was captivating throughout. I put Frostpunk in my top five city builders of the last decade, alongside Banished, Anno 1800, Tropico 6, and Cities Skylines. A sequel to something as unique as Frostpunk is difficult to imagine. Do they incorporate moving cities and be kind of a Snowpiercer scenario? Or maybe take some ideas from Mortal Engines? This is definitely one of the most anticipated city builders on the way, and it's going to be a big challenge to just not disappoint people, because expectations are so high. Either way, nothing specific has been shown off for Frostpunk 2, so we're going to have to wait for the developers to defrost their plans, and hopefully they've got something special waiting for us. Alright, now for a bunch of bonus games, but if you made it this far, you probably enjoyed your time here, and it would be greatly appreciated if you could like, subscribe, share this video, and ring that bell, as it really does help keep this channel running, and these lists being made on time. Also, you can support more directly by using the GOG or Humble referral links to buy games, or support directly on Patreon to really help push what I do further. All linked below along with the Discord community, Twitch live streams, and my Twitter where I'm active and contactable. Okay, now for those bonus games, starting with, of course, I didn't forget it, Pharaoh A New Era. This isn't a new game, so it's not in the main list, but it's a remake of the most popular Impressions City Builder. The new visual style is debated, but from the demo, it seems like gameplay is improved and refined. UI has been redone, and recent looks show upgrades since the demo, and the music has been remade as well in a pretty nice way. So yes, I'm personally excited to check this out, and I'll be doing a full playthrough of it when it releases. If you want some Pharaoh content, I have a full playthrough of Pharaoh and Cleopatra on the channel already. And then we've got some smaller indie projects. There's Ostriv. It's an indie game that's considered really good, but it's an indefinite development, but definitely playable in its current state. Emir, a city-building MMO where all your people are pigs. Super interesting project and playable, but it's kind of a development that's been going on for ages. Neolithic. An indie project that's kind of like Age of Empires if it was an ancient survival city builder, 
I'm personally very interested in seeing how that turns out. Settlement Survival. I was sponsored to check this out in 2021. It's a survival city builder that was meant to release out of early access in 2022, but seems to be taking longer to complete. Kingdoms Reborn. Survival city building with multiplayer intending to release out of early access after two years, but it might run long into 2023. Dynasty of the Sands. Egyptian city building, but few development updates and recent posts said they might be announcing some kind of release window in 2023, maybe? Empires and Tribes, a medieval city builder with RPG elements that's had a playable alpha since 2017 and it's been in early access on Steam since 2020. Lix Toko, this is from an indie dev who's been working on an impression styled city builder but it's pixel art and dinosaurs, and who doesn't like that? Grimgrad, announced in 2022 and said to be releasing by the end of 2022, so not upcoming anymore, but it's a Banished-inspired survival city builder. Echio, Lords and Merchants. This is a recently revealed indie economic city builder that I just caught sight of recently, and it seems kind of interesting. The city must grow. This is a simple kind of urban builder. It's an early access and meant to release in 2022, but I thought I'd mention it anyway, because it looks like it might interest some of you. Skid Cities. This kind of plays like SimCity 2000, but has multiple tiers going up into the sky and underground. But the last time I played it, it was kind of bare bones and visually it looks kind of rough, but it's still being worked on, but probably has a long way to go. Earth of Orin. Early days of development here, and it's kind of a mix of city building and base building, plus kingdom management. It's an interesting project that might turn out to be something special. And Floodland. Recently announced and said to be releasing by the end of 2022, it's a survival city builder like Frostpunk, but the world is flooded instead of frozen. It might be delayed into 2023, who knows. And then we have games that most likely used pre-rendered trailers to test interest and may or may not be turned into real games. Who knows? I'm just gonna blast through these. There's Eldorado, the Golden City Builder, Chinese Empire, Builders of China, Builders of Greece, City of Atlantis, City of Robots, and Cybertown. And then finally, we have a few long-term bigger projects that we've watched for years. Foundation, a medieval gridless city builder with custom modular monuments that have gameplay effects. It's a good game, but coming back every year or so doesn't really show a lot of progress and it's kind of taking a long time to get there. Though having said that, update 1.9 does look good. Workers and Resources, Soviet Republic. Super popular game, I know, but it's been in early access since 2019 with the plan to release in two years. It's been four years and it's going well. It's just taking much longer than expected, but I'm sure you know about this one already. And ultimately we have Seed. This is conceptually a fascinating project, but it's been years and there doesn't seem to be any playable game in sight. If you read through the devlogs and the blog posts, it's like, it's very interesting. But I think until I actually see a game being played, preferably a demo, I'm just gonna leave this in the bonus section. And there you have it. That's 30 upcoming city building games that should be releasing through 2023 and some into 2024, depending on their development. Which ones are you most interested in? Oh, so here's something I'd like to know. So you saw one of the latest trends in city building is going into the chill, calm, relaxed kind of gameplay, going in the complete opposite direction of the stressful survival disaster city builders. Which direction do you actually prefer? Do you play city builders to be calm and relaxed or do you like the stress and the pain? <laughs> I'm not sure personally which one I prefer. I kind of go between the two, so I'd love to know what you think. Meanwhile, if you'd like to see more upcoming games, this is just one of many lists. So drop by the other upcoming games lists for so much more. 
The genres I covered this year are listed at the top of the screen. Take your pick, and I'll see you there. Alright, that's all for now. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and found it useful, and I'll see you in the next video.